Good evening, everyone. I just learned we have to be out of here in less than an hour, so, um, uh, and I want to leave plenty of time for Q&A, so I'm going to uh, go through this quickly. This is actually, I'm going to show you 40-odd slides. Uh, Kristen's got another six or seven about D.C. specifically, but I'm going to try and give you a big picture nationally uh, of what uh, the twin achievement gaps in this country and why, why they exist and what we can do about it. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, my parents met and married in the Peace Corps. First couple to do so grew up in developing countries, Tanzania and Nicaragua. Um, uh, in my youth, um, always my parents were both educators, and so I've always sort of had a passion for it. I knew David Kopp in high school, Wendy Kopp's younger brother, uh, excuse me, in college, and he introduced me to Wendy, so I uh, thought it was a brilliant idea and a brilliant entrepreneur 20 years ago when I was graduating from college. And that was sort of where I first sort of got the bug uh, and started to uh, get exposed to our K through 12 public school system in this country and over 20 years the more I've learned the more outraged I've gotten and the more passionate I've gotten about it and and uh, so you know every year I seem to get involved with one more element of this uh, ranging from as, as Camilla said to joining uh, Wendy Kopp introduced me to Dave Levin and I saw what Kip was doing in the South Bronx and asked the very simple question why doesn't why doesn't every public school in America do these things it's sort of so obvious uh, and then uh, I, I discovered a few years later that it was really my party the Democratic Party that was the main obstacle to uh, starting to move that uh, and and change the existing system, which is failing so many millions of children. And uh, so uh, so uh, that's just a little bit of background. Uh, so I'm sort of hedge fund manager by day, education reform crusader by night. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so let me show you this presentation I put together after seeing Al Gore's uh, movie, An Inconvenient Truth. Uh, it's actually sort of appropriate. We're in a movie theater doing this. The, you know, what Al Gore did is took an issue he was passionate about and collected a lot of data and very partisan data. Uh, um, and and I clearly have a very strong opinion here, um, and uh, to try and uh, spread, you know, try and persuade others and get them engaged in, the, in in an issue he's passionate about, and that's exactly why I created this and why I'm here. Uh, so uh, so let's just talk about start off with uh, with uh, the importance of education, and you all have seen various versions of this, I'm sure. The the better educated you are, the more money you earn, and in fact, uh, if for people with a college degree, the, a four-year college degree will earn a million dollars more in their life lifetimes than people with a high school diploma. And those trends have been accelerating over time. The returns to education have been increasing in an increasingly knowledge-based world. So you can see back in the, uh, in the, you know, 50 years ago, even if you were a high school dropout or just had a high school diploma, you could get a good blue-collar union job, live the American dream. Today, uh, that's generally no longer possible uh, as inflation-adjusted earnings have been falling. For basically everybody, you've got to have an advanced degree to really be moving forward these days. And, 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 and a four-year college degree sort of the minimum to just maintain you know, current standard of living. So uh, the uh, cost of not being educated manifests itself in unemployment. Uh, this is our unemployment rate today. Nationally is 9.8 percent, but people with a uh, high school dropouts, it's double that. People with college degrees, it's half that. That's uh, only 4.2 percent. But it's actually, um, when you look at the unemployment rate, uh, you have to understand that be considered unemployed, you must have looked for a job in the previous four weeks. And high, a lot of high school dropouts stopped looking for jobs a long time ago. If you look at the labor force participation rate, 44 percent of high school dropouts, uh, 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 working age uh, folks, are, are, are not even in the workforce. Then you add the unemployment rate and you get a truly catastrophic uh, situation. So uh, education also matters a lot in terms of your likelihood of ending up in prison. You're 47 times more likely to end up in prison uh, if, you are, uh, uh, if, if you are a high school dropout than a, have a four-year college degree. Uh, and uh, it's particularly, uh, that, that is particularly true among African Americans. So, um, so um, let's take a look at our educational system. Um, over time, uh, it's almost without exception every year, our, our national spending goes up on education. And as a wealthy, growing, developed country, that's a good thing. Inflation adjusted, we now spend about $10,000 per student, uh, up from about $5,000 per student roughly 40 years ago. Um, again, that's a good thing. Um, and what is it, uh, as the system has grown, we spend more money. We've hired a lot more teachers. And that's reduced the, uh, the class size by about 40%, uh, the, the student, uh, uh, student teacher ratio has declined over time. And again, that's a good thing. That's, that's what you would want to see over time, assuming you're getting some bang for this buck. 
Well, the problem is, is since about 1975, uh, educational outcomes have stagnated. Uh, it's not that things have gotten worse, it's that we're not getting any better despite spending enormously more uh, money for this. So high school uh, completion rose and rose and rose and then flatlined, uh, bachelor's degree completion rose and rose and rose, and then flatlined maybe a little uh, increase right there. So uh, on any metric, uh, SAT scores, NAEP scores, uh, any metric we flatlined for the better part of 40 years in this country in terms of educational outcomes. So uh, why? Why? Big picture, and this is part of a 225 slide deck um, which is uh, publicly available, so uh, there's a lot more detail on all of this, but basically teacher quality over this time period has been falling fairly dramatically. Um, our school systems have become increasingly bureaucratic and unaccountable, and I actually think there's a, there's a factor uh, of this that relates to, you know, Americans have been so rich for so long, we've gotten lazy and complacent, and I think if you look, if you look statistically at where young people are spending their time. Uh, they're, they're not spending as much time on academics uh, and doing a whole lot of other messing around. Uh, and uh, in fact, I can show you some data around this. Uh, the average American household, the television set is on over eight hours a day. That's double any other country in the world. And this shows what our children are doing. Um, this is uh, white, black, Latino, Asian students, fourth graders, eighth graders, and twelfth graders. The blue bar is percentage of students that watch four hours of television on weeknights, school nights, and the white bar is percentage of students who do one hour of homework on weeknights. And you can see pretty much across the board, uh, our students are watching, far more students are watching four hours of television than they are doing one hour of homework on school nights, and it's particularly acute for African American and Latino students. So what does this lead to? Uh, achievement gap number one is the gap between the United States and its international competitors. On virtually any metric, we're, we're way behind and falling further behind. So here are your math and science uh, PISA scores for 15-year-olds. We're 25th and 24th in the world. Um, and given that we spend more per pupil than any other country, uh, country in the world, our dollars spent per point of PISA test score, our, our efficiency, uh, is, is the worst in the world, 60% worse than average. And this frightening part is, is that the longer our students are in school, the further behind they fall. So our fourth graders, only 25% of countries fourth graders are doing better than our fourth graders. By eighth grade, and math, uh, it's the same true in reading and science, uh, math, uh, it's, uh, by eighth grade, it's half. And by 12th grade, it's about two-thirds of countries are doing better than we are. So um, our uh, high school graduation rate is uh, below, below average, 21st in the world. And we send a lot of students to college. Our college uh, participation rate's fairly high. Uh, the problem is, is they're not getting very many degrees. Um, and so our conversion rate, our, our college dropout rate, uh, is a college dropout crisis is actually as severe as our high school dropout crisis. Uh, for, in contrast, take lowly Portugal here, only 25% of their young people are going to college, but they're earning 25 degrees out of every 100 students that go to college. So they're converting one to one, we're converting one half to one. So um, this shows that uh, this is percentage of people uh, who have at least a two-year associate degree. Um, and in the United States, uh, uh, our, our 45 to 54-year-olds compared with our 25 to 34-year-olds. So two, a generation ago, 40% of our population had a two-year associate degree or better. And that's the brown bar here. And compare it to these other countries. This was our educational advantage over the rest of the world that, that drove our productivity and wealth in this country. And so what's happened over 20 years? We've stayed still. We haven't gotten worse, we're just standing still, and every other country is blasting up, catching up with us, and passing us. So there is one area, though, that uh, where our students uh, do, do score off the charts. Uh, when asked, uh, do you get good marks in mathematics, uh, more American students answer yes to that question than any other country. <laughs> the problem is that our math scores stink. They, they're, they're lousy at math, but they think they're good at math. 